The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. We're back for the highly anticipated second half of the conversation with FRB, John, and Chael. Don't forget to visit frbshow.com to subscribe to the show. And without any further ado, here it is. John, you'll love this story. Okay, so, good. The World Cup of Wrestling. The World Cup of So you, you hear about World Cup all the time, soccer and all that. The World Cup of Wrestling in our community is just as big of a deal. You, right? we went, I was there deal. in L.A., yeah. But the bad side of wrestling is you're wrestling in front of 200 people in a high school gym. Even though it's the World Cup, the Iranians and the Cubans and the yeah. Japanese and the South Korea, even though it's the baddest dudes in the world, it's wrestling. Nobody comes. It's a high school gym, and I'm not exaggerating about that at the time of this story. So to also add to the story, the community is this big. It's tiny. They all know one another, right? Nobody listening to this knows anybody that wrestles Olympic level, and, and you may never meet anyone in your life. Not very many guys do it. So even though it's international, it's really small. So Matt Lindland's uh, got a rival named Fiberto Esqui. Fiberto Esqui is from Cuba. And he's arguably the greatest wrestler of all time. Two-time Olympic champion in two different weight classes. Won gold medals. That's hard to do. So, at any rate, Matt Lindley used to beat this guy all the time. But Matt could never beat him at a world or Olympic competition. But he would beat this guy. He's got a bunch of wins over him. They're out wrestling in a high school gym. There's 11 seconds left. Matt's down by three. Now, Matt has a move. When he's down, he likes to pummel for the hands and then come over the top and elbow you right in the mouth. Hope that that, like, throws you off your game and he can grab a quick takedown. Well, a takedown's worth one point. If Matt's plan works and, and, and he gets he's his point, he loses the match by two. So he comes over the top, he hits a squee, and not for nothing, these guys have wrestled all over the world. They've got a bond. Even though they're rivals, there's a bond. Hits him right in his mouth, breaks his front three teeth. Now, a squeeze so tough, he doesn't fall down. Matt doesn't get the point. Time runs out, he loses by three. Duel finishes out. There's another four matches. End of the day comes, and they're walking out of the arena, which is a high school gym, quite literally a little tiny high school gym. Well, as Matt's headed for the exit, a squee comes in with like a, an 11 or 12-year-old kid. So a squee doesn't speak English. So the kid is serving as an interpreter. Now, there's only Matt Lindland with his bag on his shoulder, a squee, and a kid. No one else there. A squee starts yelling, and the kid begins interpreting. And a squee says, this is not a fight. This is wrestle. If you want to fight, we can fight. But in my country, is not like your country. I cannot mm -hmm. go to a dentist. I cannot get my teeth fixed. I have known you a long time. Why would you do this? Why would you do this to me? So Matt puts his bag down and tells the kid, tell him okay. And the kid says, what? And Matt says, tell him I will fight him now. <laughs> so out of that entire speech, the only thing that Matt Lindland processed was tell him if he wants to fight. He, can, he heard nothing else. So the kid won't do it. And Matt's like, no, you tell him. You tell him right now. We'll fight right now. There's no one around. There's no ego on the line. There's no money. There's no, there's no one there. It's the three of them in a high school gym that's already cleared out. So the, the kid finally tells him, and his squee goes, no fight. Wrestle. No fight. Matt picks his bag up and goes, that's what I thought, and walked out. <laughs> When Matt calls and tells... Now, this isn't story. the point. Oh, when Matt calls and tells me the story, the story isn't like, oh, my God, listen to this hilarious thing I did. The point of his story was, can you believe that? Can you believe he challenged me to back down like that? I can't, I'll can't. i never lose to this guy again. I thought he was a tough guy. This guy's a coward. Jeez. He, he, he didn't understand the point of his own story. <laughs> he didn't understand the, the moral to his own story, which is That's what a makes it story. such a good That's story. That he was the fucking asshole. That he was the jerk <laughs> in the situation. What? Right. And back... he never did lose to him again. Matt lost all respect for a squee. He never lost to him again. The way I know Matt Lindlin is he fought Chuck Liddell twice, which brings me back to your comment. They, no, yeah. they, they never fought. You think of Baroni? He fought Baroni a couple times. Chuck who, Liddell who was did, actually a different way. Who did player. Chuck lose Ran. to? Gorilla Booster Monster? No, no, no. Who did Chuck lose to? Well, he sure lost to Jeremy Horn. Horn. That's yes. who I think yeah. it is. Anyways, point of the story is that it does go back to Chuck. Point of the story is you have no idea who Matt Lillard is. I, I know who Matt Lillard is. <laughs> or Jeremy Horn, apparently. I, I, I got them confused, and do apparently you, I don't. Do you, John, do you know uh, Chill's record against Horn? No. 0-1? 0-3. 3-0. 
professional 30, fights. All, all, all of 30, 27 yeah. jail across the <laughs> yeah. I lost a fight of three no, times. But, yeah. but, but, but no, you no, were but beating him every ass. fucking time. Kicking his ass. But at the time, wasn't Jeremy Horn considered the baddest guy at that weight class? And he was. He was, though, yeah, right? Was I right remember that. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I fought him, and he got on a plane and went out to South Korea and fought Anderson the very next week. Now, he lost that fight, but it was an upset. He was supposed to win, and it was a close fight. He pulled, told his hamstring and still almost beat him. But so at, at that point in time, yeah, Horn was the man. Absolutely was. What was your hiccup with Horn? Like, you're... you're He's not a great athlete, right? Right. You know, he's he's a good jujitsu guy, not an elite jujitsu guy. At you're, that time, you're a high level athlete. Yeah, at that time he was pretty elite. He was. Yeah, if you look back, well, he he'd already finished Chuck Liddell. He fought Chuck yeah. Liddell in the UFC, choked him out, and then was released from the UFC. I was fighting him on the on the open circuit, but he was ranked number one, and he went through this run. I mean, his run was incredible. I don't even know how many fights he won in a row. Maybe like twenty four, twenty five fights in a row. But he was fighting two and three times a month, wow. uh, so it was cool, right? Now he's got this this allegiance because you know Horn's doing a fight and he jumps in a car and he's driving halfway across the country, he's fighting somebody else and he jumps in the car and and uh, yeah, so he, he had this cool little story going. And uh, yeah, I was brand new. I was trying to get out there. The only reason I got the Horn fights, Brian, is because no one else would fight him. Hmm. And I said, "Yeah, I'm in." And then uh, again, I'm in again. And yeah, I'm gonna you know give me give me a third time. And I did whip that guy's ass. But but I mean, he won fair and square every time. No, no doubt about that. Tap but uh, yeah, and one time the scar I've got on my head, tw- twenty two uh, twenty two stitches I got from Horn. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah but he he was a rough. It's kind of cool though. It's like a lightning bolt. Looks like a little yeah, what, yeah. Uh, like Wolverine. I used to have another one over here. Yeah, if you look close, awesome, yeah. yeah was, and it opened Mark Horn. Busted them. Yeah. Or did you? Or gig- that, no, Marquardt was the other one. Did you gig yourself? Or? Yeah, he would think. You? Yeah. I had a Did he have match. to blade you, or did you, bl- did you blade yourself? I Because, I mean, veterans typically blade themselves. Right. Newer guys have the veteran blade. That's them. right. Yeah. What is the, what is the hardest or most painful thing you felt in a fight? Like the specific Anderson, uh. Ouch, that hurt. Uh, yes. Let, let me tell you the one. It, it, Let's see if if we match up here. UFC ninety five when you got submitted by Maya, he hit you with a punch. Oh my god, did he ever? Which sounds weird because Maya is not known as a big right. puncher. Hardest I've ever been hit by Damian Maya. Wow. No. Yeah, but he tricked me too. I was on top of him. We're on the ground, and he reaches so there's but he reaches over to go for a Kimura lock. Yeah. And on his way back to reset himself, so he reached for, on his way back, he backhanded me, hit me so hard, it made this click, like a, and the, it was, the fight was over right then. And the <laughs> fight went another couple minutes. And, uh, but, but he you didn't shut know. Off right there. He didn't know, yeah, it's like, hey, you, you, you don't know this, but you actually won this about two minutes ago. He <laughs> hit me so stinking hard, but the worst, the worst I've ever been hurt, I fought Nate Marquardt, and he need me. Right off the bat, mm-hmm. on my way in, he broke my sternum. No shit. And I didn't you know it was won broken. this fight, right? Yeah, and it took, you, it took so long. You to won heal. that uh, like 30, like, 26 you know, months. Eight months to heal. I used to go to practice. My sister made me basically like this vest thing. Was a so you, fought, you ran out of gas. You fought Anderson? Oh, yeah. yeah. You fought Anderson with a broken fucking sternum? Yeah, well, and it was healed. I went and got something called PRP therapy. A pl- replacement. Yeah, and, it, and that did speed things up, but. You know, a sternum's like your ribs. They're yeah. not gonna, they're just not, you can't cast them. You can't, they're just not gonna heal. The good news is they're not gonna get much worse. If mm. you could put up with the pain, you can wow. keep on living life. And it was a bad pain. Yeah, my sister made me this thing. She sewed it and, it was, and I looked ridiculous. It was like this, like I had boobs, but she, she made this thing right over like, you know, where your chest goes. It was a big pillow. It went in my t-shirt. It looked ridiculous, but it got me through months of. You should have fought like the Rock did when he got the pictorial uh, surgery. Yeah, uh, with the black uh, little thing. No, listen, he, MRBI, he got some fat. Taken he had out something. Of yeah, yeah. That was probably from <clears throat> the gimmick. Yeah, too. Uh, his gimmick. Yeah, the Rock could have been. I, I, no, I can't never. No, it's no, tiny. Dude, come on. Okay. Um, I love your gimmick. So I want whenever you what throw you, what me. What are you talking about gimmick? When you, it's a shoot. It's brother. a shoot. It's a shoot. But you, but a lot of people turn. A shoot into a gimmick. It's a it's a work yeah. shoot which you got going. Yeah, on. I think Kevin Ioli uh, tried to call me out and said that uh, <laughs> you know you, you got to play some angle. But then I saw a, a message that he sent a mutual friend, and he's like, uh, "Yeah, FRB has his cult following." 
and then he put himself over. Say, Which is I, true, though. I, I make a lot of money and, and something like that. But it's but, like it's almost like if you had Iron Sheik in the room, right? You're gonna throw him some softballs just because you want the gimmick, sure. right? You're yeah. gonna bring up Hulk Hogan. Sure. Or, okay. In this conversation that we've been having, you said something about Chuck Liddell. So I don't even want to talk about Chuck Liddell. So when we were talking about Chuck the greatest Liddell. light heavyweights. Oh, I, I just meant that. I know, I know it may not be personal, but I'm just curious. Why I, would I you was, put I him? I just thought Shogun was superior to Chuck Liddell. And, the, and people in, might be partial to Chuck because probably he was the most popular MMA fighter in the United States for damn near I mean, half was, a decade. He was the first star, right? He was the first star. Right? He, was the first right, star. Yeah. he was on cover of ESPN before fucking Kimbo or Ronda Rousey, whoever. Um, no, but uh, Chuck Liddell, uh, no, I don't have any. There okay, was a okay. time frame issue there, too. A lot of people, it's not the popular opinion, but there is an opinion out there uh, where you'll hear Chuck was the greatest light heavyweight. Like, nah, no. Chuck, Chuck had a very good run, but... He wouldn't have the opportunity to be the greatest. It was it was the wrong time. But it almost, but but I mean, there weren't a lot of guys. He was having to fight the same guy repeat. He fought Bob Blue twice. Agreed twice. there. Agreed two or three there. times. You know, there wasn't enough. Tito twice. There wasn't enough bodies in the weight. And I don't want. I don't want to put you on the spot with right. this, Chael, because I don't know your relationship with him, and I don't know if you know you guys protect each other and whatnot. But I feel that way about Matt Hughes. First of all, he's the only guy to win a world championship by getting choked out. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Number two, he he had at least two fights during his reign where they weren't uh, title fights. One was Hoist Gracie, and one was um, someone that didn't make uh, make weight. I think. Okay. Um, are, you, are you talking about Travis Luter? That was Anderson. No, not Luter. It was well, he uh, did that. Matt did fight Hoist, and it was at one seventy five, so it was not but non title. Yeah, and I I'll think of the name, but. And and look who he fought. God, I, I I'll look him up here, and and so I can tell you. But some you know, names, but the thing that I always guy that hear is overrated, in my opinion. The the thing that I always hear about Matt though is just how nice of a guy he is. Right. You know. He, Good for he him, is a though. very nice guy. Here's what happens. <laughs> I mean, but uh, if you're, if he you're, could be a great guy. Look, if you're doing a shoot on Matt, John, your your point was uh, that they woke him up and gave him the champ. That's true. Yeah. Is that his fault? And that was just a it's weird hack of stairs, but that happened. The other thing is he, in his entire career, and this gets missed, in his entire career he fought two guys that were ranked in the top ten, and they both beat him. Now, he came back and oh, beat yeah. those guys. I'm talking about George St. Pierre and B.J. Penn. Those were the only guys Your ranked in the top ten. Your former teammate beat him twice. Are we talking about Matt Hughes? Yeah. Who beat Hallman. Him? Oh, Dennis Hallman did Wasn't beat him Wasn't he your teammate? Yeah. That's right, yeah. And he did beat him twice. But... It's fucking house burned down, and you were one of the people that helped him. Yes, yes, but there, so there was there there was the point that I'm getting at is there wasn't a lot that he could do. But if you're going to talk about actual history, it didn't get much easier career wise than that. And there were guys around, and he stayed away from them. I mean, you hear about that all the time. But you know, John Fitch and Josh Koscheck were going, "Hey man, give me my <laughs> shot." Yeah, and they want to do it. I mean, they put them in there, guys like. Here's, Joe I Riggs. One Joe Riggs is the guy I was talking about. Now, I guess that was a title shot. I thought he missed weight, but I regardless, it doesn't matter. Joe Riggs got a title shot. <laughs> Sakurai, Carlos Newton, a couple of times. No, man, there there was some water down. Frank Trigg, some job or his ass. But you know the that. interesting thing: Frank Trigg was the favorite in that first fight against Matt Hughes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like minus one seventy. Like everybody thought Trigg was gonna. I think I was there. Is that the one where he did the comeback and the bot and I think the slam? Was, I think that was the second he, fight. I think it was. I think it was, this, it was, was the second. The second one. I think that just got then. inducted back yeah. in the Hall of Fame, which is that's that's weird. cool. I mean, I like to see that Chris for Trick. He just Lytle, moved to Hawaii again. These guys might be great people. I'm talking about you're you're calling a guy the greatest of all time in a division. I just gave you three of maybe his five title defenses. Or, sure. or while he was, five fights while he was champion. I, I have one gripe against Matt Hughes. L- literally only one, personally or professionally. And that is, uh, he came out with an expression. And this really isn't his fault as much as it is Mike Goldberg and these other guys that have then ran with the expression. But that was, you are not really champion until you defend your title. Now, not only is that absurd, not only is that ridiculous, not only is that completely degrading, to people that won a world championship uh, and didn't defend it. 
My gripe with Matt Hughes is that he did not make that claim until he had successfully defended it. And they had him to defend it against an absolute bum named Sakurai. I'm a fan of the sport. I couldn't tell you for a billion dollars what Sakurai's first name is. In fact, that might be his first name, and I don't know his. I don't even know who the hell this guy is. Hi- Hayato. Okay, so yeah. he doesn't make the cl- he doesn't he doesn't make this claim until the fight is now. Had he made it ahead of time, this would have been a courageous move. Hey, look, I'm not even champion. Matter of fact, you can't even be champion until you defeat. You say that before the fight, you got some balls. You say it in your post-fight speech, it sucks. And guys have ran with it as though it's true, and it's very degrading. Take a guy like Forrest Griffin, without question, world champion, beat everybody there was. He never defended the belt. And I could go on and on with guys that weren't able to defend, but he also wasn't able to fight Hayocho Sakurai he had in a title defense. To fight fucking Rashad Evans. Right, you got to fight Rashad Evans. Right, he gets put to sleep. It's you know? the opposite of Come the on. Ric Flair promo. To be the man, you got to beat the man. You Once you beat, beat him, man. you're the man. Right. Right? The, right? That guy's the champion for a reason. Sure. Roll yeah. out BJ Penn if you want. All you I gotta say trash, when someone you know? says Matt Hughes is yeah. Joe Riggs. You know, I'm I, sorry, Matt Hughes is probably a great guy. Nothing against him personally. You, know, you bring up BJ Penn. I see all these people online that they talk about their super fights and all this. And I said, there's never gonna be another super fight ever in the UFC because BJ Penn don't fight no more. Because right. he's not he, going up and down. He's the only guy with the balls to to. Just go fight yep. anybody, yep. anytime, anywhere. BJ is the real deal. And absolutely, you know, he didn't take care of himself. He did some things wrong. Hey, he didn't gimmick himself. Sure, I don't think he did not. Maybe, maybe with the cold beer. Sure, <laughs> that's about he it. He did do a cool workout underwater when they used to do yes. like those yeah. all axis yeah. things, and he'd go under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. Matt Lillen went over and did that with him. Said it was a bear. Really? Absolute bear, yeah. You could not come up, you know, according to the, the coat. You can't come up till you get, you gotta go under, underwater and pick up a stone, then you gotta carry it X amount of feet before you can yeah. come back up for breath. And it looks really Matt cool. Matt couldn't do it? No, he did it, but the rule is you cannot come up until you get that stone to X feet, including, you know, whatever happens, happens. Unreal, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, but, but, you know, a little weird, a little unconventional. But, uh, yeah, PJ Penn was the real deal. So what man. was his Absolutely. thing? He gassed? Sure, he can. Yeah, he can. So. Uh, he didn't work hard. You know, it wasn't a wasn't what, what, what surrounded with a lot of yes men. Yeah, you know, they, 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 they smoke a lot of dope over there. They don't train a lot. Everyone's late for practice. It's a different culture. It really is. And But uh, here's the thing. I think I've talked to you way. about this, Chael. When you have a skill, you have a skill. If I know how to build a home, I know how to build a home. If I go and do cocaine every night... Sure, my judgment may be off a little bit, but when I show up to work, yeah, maybe I'm I'm a little bit loopy, but I know how to build a house. When BJ Penn has a skill, I can go in there and you tell me in combination I can land it. I have power. I have I know what to do in jiu-jitsu. When a guy gives me this, I know what to do with it. It's almost instinct. How does that how does he have at many people believe to be the best skills of any fighter, and he goes in there and he fights Matt Hughes or he fights whoever, and he loses. Why? Do you know? I well, mean, could you under, guess? Undersized? Yeah, and there's, there's so many intang- intangibles. You know, the, the best athlete or the best skills, that'll take you so far. But, it, you know, in the fight game, it's so much about spirit and who can push and who's got the grit and who can deal with pain and adversity. Who can deal with those adrenal, uh, adrenaline dumps? You know, you'll, you'll hear that term out there, and it sounds like a cop out, but it's a real thing. You get in there, you get excited, you get the people, the lights. You know, who, who's a good competitor? Ronda Rousey does not have a single skill that is, uh, you know, really going to make it ooh and ah. E- including her armbar. Her armbar is very basic. She shows it. She shows everybody. Here's how I do my armbar. Try to stop me. It's very basic, but she's a master competitor. Now, John Jones does have those skills that make you go, oh, what, what, what did you just do? So He's a video game character. So, Chael, how does Ronda get those armor? Is, just, is it just because she's so fucking strong, she can rip the arm, like they're, they're trying to guard the arm, and she can just rip it out? I think how the does, how does she get the arm? Because everybody says she's really good at the arm bar because her mom taught it to her. Sure. Is that a, a reasonable explanation. You know, she she is very good at the armbar, but her armbar is very basic. And and she quite literally, you go on YouTube now, she shows her armbar. She will tell people, this is my armbar. If you break it down, she's telling the truth. She shows how she sets it up. She shows how she's applied. But Mike Tyson used to do that. He used to tell people, I'm going to knock you out with an uppercut. 
he'd make them think about uppercuts all day long, and he'd come out and it th threw them off their game. So there is a, a psychological strategy to that too. But why she gets it, I don't know. You know, first off, the girls are terrible. That's true. That's that's a reality. And second, uh, they're not great competitors. Some of those girls, she straight up caught in arm bars. Several of those girls were just ready to get out of there and knew if I extend my arm, Ronda Rousey will go for it and I can tap, and they did. And that's a reality too. That happens. That happens in fighting. If if the women's division was like any other division in UFC, any division, whether it's the most stacked or the, the least, would Ronda Rousey be this dominant? No, she would be champion. She would be. She would be champion. She is the best competitor. But no, she wouldn't be this dominant. Her, her, Ronda's skills are the real deal. Her competition stinks. Why is Cyborg good? Is she? I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. She's beating people. Yeah, and I, I don't know either. I couldn't produce a name for you. Could you give me one? No. She's beat. I've Mar never watched her. Marlos Kunin. Did she beat her? What about Gina Carano? Okay, I mean, was Gina, Gina Carano, Carano good? Was she good? No. She was all right for the time. Well, you know, for, she was for the just time. all right, but she but, was all right for the time. But people got to realize, like, Gina Carano was a mediocre high school softball player. Ronda Rousey was a fucking Olympian. Twice. Twice. So Gina Twice. Carano what Twice. found a gym and decided I'm gonna go try this because and she was she, good. She and was dating yeah. the uh, what's the guy's Kit. yeah Kit Cope yeah the Muay and Thai guy Kit Cope yeah, yeah. and the, the, what's the, the Muay Thai coach said uh, you know you, you you're you could be skinnier you could look better so she goes and trains and decides I know how to do this and apparently pretty well I mean. Yeah, for her, like Chell said, for her time, she for was pretty good. She was selling out arenas, though. For with, stri yeah. Strike Force? Yeah, in San Jose. Her, yeah. Her last fight, she sold it up. I, I think Cyborg, even, she sold out that. And the sure. pay per view numbers were decent, I think. It was Showtime. Showtime. It, it wasn't so the numbers were decent. The viewership. I was at WWE at the time. Viewership, very strong. And we were wondering why couldn't we put a girl in there and do that? I mean, the simple answer mm. was you can, you just, the way you book them. But. So, so Carano, the whole, like, at, at one point, I think a couple of years ago, there was the hype around a super fight. I think even Dana White was speculating. Sure. She I was got teasing close. about a comeback. Yeah. Yeah. She, she doesn't stand a chance, is what you're saying. Oh, no. no Ronda exactly. Armbar. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she couldn't get to wait. You know, Gina left on a, on a bad note and then, you know, sat around and got it. By sat around, I mean, she, you know, she wasn't doing MMA. You don't get better by not doing MMA. Right. Uh, yeah, they did. They just did this with Brock Lesnar. You know, he left on a sour note too, and they tried to say, "Well, let's just bring him back, uh, and he'll he'll take over the world and sell out Madison Square Garden." Well, he will sell a lot of tickets, but no, he he didn't get better in his time off. Why was he so good? Well, he wasn't. Yeah, Brock was pretty he, raw. He won a world exactly. Battle, That's my point, though. Is he wasn't, but he he kept winning fights. Well, no, no he, he, good he was versus five and effective. five and four. He beat a 45-year-old man for a world title. Here was but a 45-year-old man that was a world champion. He was beating that, everyone that else. That weighed 218 pounds. Yeah, that was the thing with Brock. Is like, take his amateur wrestling news again. He was very effective. He was the cha he was national champion. It's effective. Great, great, great. Wasn't a good wrestler. In terms of he's never going to make a technique video. He's never going to work a camp. You're not going to send your kid to a Brock Lesnar He's just a clinic. monster. He weighed 265 pounds. That was the limit. In the NCAA Finals, he wrestled Wes Hand from Iowa, who weighed 220 pounds. So Brock had 45 pounds of muscle weight advantage on a guy, which in wrestling is not allowed. I wrestled at 197 pounds. My opponents weighed exactly 197 pounds. Yeah, exactly. Pounds. So he was in a weight class where he was given 45 pounds of muscle, and he still went into double overtime to beat this guy. Beat him fair and square, it was within the rules. But if you would have given me anybody that I outweighed by 45 pounds, they they never would have made it three rounds, let alone in the double overtime. That that's just a reality. So you're taking a little bit away from that skill set, a little bit. Oh, from the skill? No, no, no. I'm taking Brock, a huge yeah. part away from his skill. His wow. skill set sucked. And remember, his position was solid. He was strong. It was hard to get yeah. a position because he was huge. And Brock never did freestyle or Greco Roman. Yeah, Brock was not a How does he wrestler. beat Frank Mir then? What UFC 100, right? How does he beat Frank Mir? Mir is your boy, and I don't know where it comes from. Wow. Mir, Mir's guy. a jiu-jitsu guy. I did not know where that Mir's comes a jiu-jitsu guy. A and manager, Brock, Brock had fighter. Comprido. I don't know if I'm saying that. Comprido or Comprido. Mm -hmm. And he taught him well. He, he mm -hmm. you know, uh, defended all the submission attempts. He took him down. 
but beat him up. Chael, regardless of, of where you rank Frank Mir, all-time, current, he's a professional fighter. Yeah, stud, world champion. World champion. It's good Currently, bro- good broadcast. Top 10? Absolutely, top okay. 5. Brock Lesnar destroys him in that second fight. Yes. How? Because Brock didn't get hit in the face. As yeah. soon as he gets hit in the face, I mean, if you're, all I bets don't, are I don't up. really not answer your question unless you ask me to recap the fight. Brock threw him down, pinned him there, and, and began wailing away. John, what 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 point are you trying to make? That yeah, I'm, I'm not even trying to. to make a point. I guess I'm just trying to ask someone who's been there. You're, you're trying to do MMA math, and that shit never it works. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It, it's it's there's so many intangibles like that's the whole thing that makes. I guess fight. my question is so so he is a rare instance in w- in which the skill doesn't beat whatever it is he has. Yeah, well, and it does, it also sounds like I'm putting down guys. Uh, the only thing that matters is there are you effective? It doesn't matter how many spinning back kicks and boards you can break and all this crap that. You know, you're taught in these martial arts. It only matters how fit. Mike Tyson wasn't overly skilled. He was super effective because he had this raw power, right. this absolute aggression. He had size in his favor in terms of he was not built like anybody else. He was compact and powerful. It was hard to get a training partner to look like him. He had these intangibles. But he's also one of the, the greatest, most devastating boxers of all time, effectiveness-wise. And Brock was too. He's nasty. Effect, but Joe, that's all that matters. Y- you've been one of the guys who've been most outspoken about Mike Tyson. And if you go back and you look at his his past, never made an Olympic team. No. Was yeah. never the best in the did, world. Did he even make a junior Olympic team? Um, I believe he made a junior world team. Junior world but team. But he did not make an Olympic team. And what? did did he go pro because he could never? What was the guy's name? Trevor um, Burbank, Burbank, wasn't it? Yeah. With, I think that was our Olympian when Tyson would have. I believe have, that's right. Okay. So, and, and then Tyson, I mean, if you look at it, everybody said, everybody points to the, the Michael Spinks fight. Michael Spinks is a 175 pounder. 175 pounder. Right. So, uh, and then uh, Tyson, what, what, what other signature wins? 38 year old Larry Holmes. Sure. Okay. Um, possibly his two wins against Donovan Razor Ruddick. Yeah. And in his wins his wins are went fine. Give him his wins, but the problem was he they called him the world champion. They said he was the best in the world. And there was never a day of his life where he was. Evander Holyfield was there the whole time. Yep. People people often forget that. We we all concede that Evander can kick his ass because he did. We get yep. that. What people have to understand is they're the same age or Evander's a year older. It wasn't a matter of Mike stayed in there so long and then the next kid came along. I think Evander's He's older, and he had some kind of heart condition. Sure, that they want. He wasn't supposed to fight. Yeah, and Evander but, called him out forever. But you, but you know who's better than both of them? Lennox Lewis, and even better than him. Tell me, Riddick Bowe. I was about to yeah, say Riddick could be. Bowe. Yeah, because well, Lennox Lewis wouldn't fight time, Riddick Bowe. Is that right? Or, he, no, I think Riddick, Riddick Bowe, Bowe wouldn't would not fight, fight Lennox Lewis. Lewis. He drops the, the trash can gimmick. I think trash bag. I, I think Riddick Bowe. You know he he should have quit after the the, uh, the trilogy against Holyfield because yeah, then he, he you know he fought back. the Polish guy that just kept uh, yeah. undercut you know right the in white the guy yeah what's his name um, Volska I'm close that's not it I'm would, very close he, yeah he would just continue to low blow him what was know? that white guy's name that kept hitting at him? that time I don't remember Andrew Galata there you go oh Andrew Galata yeah he lost to Andrew Galata. No, no, no. Andrew no. Golata. Golata was low blow. Andrew blow. Golata yes. was was beating him up, and Golata would just low blow him. It was like Golata was tr- was trying to lose. It was weird. Did you oh, see he that? was pro- yeah. He wanted to get disqualified, yeah. but he was throwing <laughs> hooks, power hooks, like you throw it to the body, and he just went right to his testicles. Jeez, right. Yeah. Did you? This is good for you. We talk about Netflix sometimes. Watch a documentary. I think Tyson is credited as executive producer, maybe. Great documentary, though. It's called Champs. And they talk about some of the stuff we're talking about. They talk about Holyfield coming up and Tyson coming up at the same time and how it was supposed to happen. It didn't happen. And then once it did. But then it's also like their personal lives and stuff yeah. like that. But it's a great documentary. It's on Netflix. You should watch it. I'll check it out. It's good. Yeah. And all the Tyson apologists are like, he was never the same after prison. He was 30. Right. He, and his head was in a different. I mean, he, was he didn't want to fight anymore. That—that's the whole thing. Is like, and here's the thing too: is 
I don't know because I was a kid, but I watched the Tyson fights, and I did think this is the baddest man on the planet. But think about it. How it old was, are you, John? Uh, thirty-three. So you're, you're. I'm thirty-two. I you're grew up on Mike Tyson age. fights. You see, but but we grew up at the same time, and I, 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 I guess I never really thought much of Tyson. Here's the thing: is I, 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 thought, I was a wrestling fan because in I 90, fall for the gimmick. And, I saw Buster Douglas, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know. Well, see, I do good. remember seeing. Yeah. See, my guy was always Lennox Lewis. Right. As far as like a skill set and going, because I mean, even at the time there was there was Lewis, there was Holyfield, Tyson, Riddick, Bo, maybe not Tyson so much was during like a, those three, but I always remember being like, I I'd go with Lennox Lewis as this guy. Now again, I'm young, I don't really have anything to go yeah. by except what I'm saying. That was a really but great year of heavyweight. Time. It was, but the point on Tyson was maybe he was just the first manufactured. Superstar, this is the guy we want to go with. Sure. Let's say he's the greatest, and he's the greatest. Yeah, well, you have to say he's the greatest. I mean, you have to. If you're, that's just basic promotion. It is one thirty in the morning. How long does your podcast go? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it, it's the a guy podcast. who says he go. never sleeps is, is tapping out the first. You want to know my problem? Is I'm I'm so thirsty. I want to get over to the, the phone and order. A, I want to order a coke. Make it but part I, of the podcast. I, yeah, I don't know. Can I order a Coke, or is that going to throw everything off? Well, i got to take a piss. So it, when I come back from taking a piss... So can... All right, you go pee, yeah. and then John and, I, John and I talk while you pee? Exactly. Okay, you yeah. go pee, because then okay. i gotta, I got to get a Coke. And then when he comes back, me and him talk? Yeah, yeah. and then do we all talk? What I say I... we listen to you order a Coke. Yeah, we can. I mean, everybody wants to know what does Chael do... When he's not fighting. And let's, everybody, let's, wants everybody yeah. you don't, Big I mean, news. I can't even respond to as many tweets as I get asking questions Talk about. Talk shit, you like us. That's funny. No, I'm, I, I'm, I'm so thirsty. I've, I've had two, two sodas since we've been doing this. And I, I gotta get it. I might You won't two. drink Pepsi. Let's talk about that. I, I used actually, to be a Pepsi guy. Yeah, see, I flip flop. Right. Now, I don't drink soda anymore. Um, but when I did, it was Coke. Then it went, when I, I did the Pepsi challenge and I was like, oh, it's Pepsi. It's not even close. It's Pepsi. Right. And then I went back and I was like, I was wrong this whole time. It's Coke. Coke is one of the greatest treats that God has given man. <laughs> you call it a treat. It how, is. How did you quit Coke? A Coca-Cola big, big enough, big enough to swim in myself. in the summertime. You, you, when you quit, there's, there's. There's no strategy. You just have to go, today I'm not having one. And then tomorrow you go, I'm not having one. And if Don't tell me. Don't look. I'm never going to quit. Well, if they prove it, I'm trying you, to quit. It's I'm, not about, I'm trying it's, to quit. It's, 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 if, you're, if you're cool with iced tea, you can make it. Yeah, I think it's a sugar, man. I mean, I've tried so many times. You can get your sugar. When I quit... But the doctor Soda, says I went to dessert I'm, like I'm crazy. Good. Yeah, you I, you'll find your way to get your your. Now I don't know if you've ever drinking. Um, there's a drink called kombucha. Have you ever tried it? No. What is it? I've had it. Okay, it's it's an amazing amazing drink, and I, I I'm gonna try to describe it, but I don't really know what it is. It, it's a kombucha is like a mushroom, but somehow they get this mushroom. And I think it gr somehow grows upside down. Gr mushrooms grow from the ground, and I think kombucha grows from It's a from California the hipster drink. Yes, exactly. Uh, Although you live in Oregon, so I don't know why you're saying that. Um, do you guys need anything? No. How many beers do we have left? I mean, it's got to be enough to get you through the night. I mean, even if it's a couple. How many deep are you? eight beers deep? You just got here. Eight? I mean, shit. I, I was on a fucking plane for six hours. Anyways, FRB, real quick. There's the kombucha that they, they make flavors. So they'll be like, oh, cranberry orange and this and that. And they're all good. Yeah. But there is one now that is a blatant ripoff of Dr. Pepper and, and Coke. And I'll get those. And they, they, they don't taste like Coke. They come really close, but they'll give you your fix. If you can find it. What? How many, like, grams of sugar? Nine. That's it? Cause like Nine, Coke, but it's all natural sugar. It's natural. Because, like, Coke or Dr. Pepper is, what, 39? God, 30? at least. 
It's it's fucking bad. And, and it's not even so much the sugar that's in it as it's the the fake sugar and like the what uh, the glucose or high, high fructose corn, corn, syrup. corn syrup. That's the worst. The the kombucha has just all natural. Whatever you get in it is natural. Chael loves it. He loves the stuff. He he calls me all Why the time. Why are we plugging these about jobbers? What Chael's you lost a lot of weight. Kombucha. Did, Have I? He look like he he's has? lost a lot of weight. He was very chubby last that. time I saw him. Yeah, very chubby. You're looking good. I was worried about him. Oh, bad guy Inc. sold the t-shirt. He was two hundred and sixty-three pounds the last time I saw him. Jeez. And that was only like three he's months ago. He's walking around looking like Brock Lesnar. What? How much do you weigh now, Chael? Uh, you know, I'm still in the 240s, but I've been, I've really? been exercising pretty hard. I've been exercising pretty yeah. hard. That's surprising. Yeah, Clayton came back to town. Clayton was in town for oh, about he two, moved. two yeah. weeks. I was training oh, anyway, but... Fabiano's been working us. Fabiano might have a match coming up with uh, Saul Ribeiro, so he's been getting himself in shape, which, you know, pushes us all a little harder. So. Isn't he a, a little guy, Ribeiro? Ribeiro, yeah, he was like 188 pounds when he won Abu Dhabi multiple times. He was times. in strike force, wasn't he? I don't know if he ever fought or not. He was training How old Diego he? Sanchez for a while there. Uh, Ribeiro's got to be damn near 50. Got to be. I'm thinking of some, uh, I'm probably thinking of Shale, uh, you I'm, might, I'm thinking of somebody else. Okay. Jill, who's who do you like in WWE right now? Do you have a guy? Well, yeah, Lana? I do. I do. Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, that was kind of the obvious. I felt like if we just said who... Now, how do, how do you get away with watching WWE? Like, does the wife watch with you? or No. And she, I gotta watch it after hours, She too. won't... She won't watch... Because she's into real... I, she watches Total Divas. She watches Divas, but she doesn't want to watch Raw. What does she think? She never misses Divas. What does she think... Who's her girl on Divas? She likes them all, but she likes the redhead. She likes Eve. She likes Eve, yeah... If she does pull off that red hair, I'll give it to her. Does she think that's a hard look that Cena will marry Nick? Because I think <laughs> no. I think I think Nikki Bella, like everybody knows no. that he's never going to do it, and but like she thinks he. I kind of feel she. Can't. I know two. She, come on. The number two. Very big reasons why he won't. Work. What are they? I just said. <laughs> because she has breast implants. Did you? No. You said two very big. Okay. The number two. Right. Yes. There's... <laughs> okay. It just got Brian knows two. He just hasn't solved the riddle yet. Yeah, but, uh, he's he's, solved he's it. now nine beers. I'm nine beers deep. What do you? I mean, I, I, oh no, you're not. No, you're not. You are. You are, ten, you are in ten right now. There is ten beers. Yes, there is two left yeah. in the the thing, and I ordered you a dozen. Yeah, who, who at needs the friends? This podcast, which yeah. was not very long ago. Who needs friends when so, you have so uh, chill to count your beers? Guy? Is there a guy you would well, you would endorse? <laughs> the, the the greatest. Character right now and possibly ever is uh, Bray Wyatt. Yes, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but Randy Orton is the man. And was very cool when we met him at WrestleMania. When we, when we were at the was WrestleMania, he a fan? I think he's a. Fan. He was just a nice guy. He was just yeah. a cool, nice. Randy's guy. a great guy. Yeah, yeah. Randy was with like he's got a. He, I guess he just got divorced. He's got this new uh, girlfriend. What was that? He's got this new girlfriend or whatever. And I think I. Was, he's engaged. He, oh, he's engaged. Yeah. So it's like, hey, oh, hey, Randy, it was a great match. I think he wrestled. Who the fuck Seth, he wrestled? Seth. 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 He beat him clean. He's the, he's Seth yeah. Rollins. Champion. Yeah. An hour before Seth got the strap put yeah. on him. So, With a great RKO, by the way. So that I, I say to him, I say to him, this is, this is my friend, this is my friend Chael. And, and his reaction was like, what? what? Yeah. And he's like, Chael. And I have a picture of it. Did and you really? He, he, I have a picture of him going like this. I mean, he marked out. He marked out for you. Did he really? And he I, used I didn't to talk that. about UFC a lot. His reputation, you know, as being an asshole, he was the nicest, the nicest guy. guy. But here's the, the thing nicest about Randy. Guy. He's he's just he. You can't mess with Randy and get away with it. Where you might brush something off, he won't. Nicest guy in the world. Never once did I have a problem with. I worked with Randy very closely. Nicest guy. But the second you do something to piss him off, he wears it on his sleeve. You, you, it's just... He's and, Brian. He's it, front row Brian. He's oh, front, row Brian. front row Brian. Oh, come on, Chad. Wait, so FRB, so wait, so you say Bray. Do you have a guy? You'll, you'll turn it on specifically if you know this guy's on. 
really only Brock Lesnar. Really, yeah. yeah. You know? There's not a lot of guys. Under the qualification of... you just gave, yeah. Brock Lesnar. So yeah. guy. Or that where you tune on, you stop I will what you're say doing. this, that, though. I mean, if they say, hey, Brock Lesnar's on Raw, I mean, I'm going to watch. And then and Paul Heyman is just like, I mean, Paul Heyman is incredible. He's great. They I mean, he switched the Brock's glory, glory up. Brock Lesnar song he was singing. I'm like, this motherfucker, it, uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, he's great. Brock and if just Douglas, wrestled Seth, if Douglas right? could control himself, Douglas Where? has that type of potential too. Sure. Can't. He can't, yeah. Yeah, if he could, yeah, you're right. He's a genius. Wait, wait, no, wait a minute. Did, did Brock just wrestle Seth? Is John right about that? Yeah, and Undertaker came did? back. No. Okay. But Battle, see, that was like, that was what is, is that Brock? No no no, 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 no. That was Kofi Kingston in Japan. How many How many matches has Brock had now? Four or five Brock matches. wrestled Kofi Kingston? Yeah, a squash match, right? Well, yeah, a glorified house show, basically. But they're, they're going to do another house show October 3rd at the Garden. On the network? They're going to do Lesnar versus, I don't know, who. But Lesnar, who's he fighting? You don't know. I don't know. No. But he's, it's on the network? Yes. No, but here's the thing is I watched the Seth match and I got bored. And, and Brock matches have been so exciting since he came back. That match, I got bored. They're doing the same thing. And that's a typical Vince move. Just keep doing it. But, you know, I'm really into the authority, too. When Triple H talks, because I always like to compare, like, what he's saying to, like, what could really be best for business. That That's kind of my interest. There's probably a lot of, of shoot in there. I think there is. But, like... More than you... You know, here's the funny thing about Triple H. And when I was there, you know, Triple H has this reputation of holding people down. Right. And trying to put himself over. And I saw that more out of Shawn Michaels but that's the than I ever saw out of Triple H. And I used to tell people, man, Triple H, man, he he, he will go in and say, let's say he's not big on Chael and we're going to push Chael. He'll go in there and he'll go, man, you know, no, probably not. But he'll give ten reasons why you shouldn't push Chael. And then he'll go, but FRB is the guy we need to push. No different than what I would do when I was in the meetings. Shawn Michaels, on the other hand, would just go, no, uh, Chael looked at me wrong. And that's it. And then it's just the end of the Chael push. So and the, now you're starting to see the real Triple H. Yeah. And that's the guy that I saw. So that brings up an interesting topic, because I know you've been asked by a few people about working a match, wrestling a match. And I, you, you, you tiptoed around it. You really didn't answer the question. You said you're not trained. You can get trained. There, there is dozens of highly qualified wrestlers that would love to have you in their school. The Heart Dungeon you could go yeah. to, Bruce. I'm sure so, Bruce Hart would be a great. But, but it would be just that I'd have to go in and do it, and I, right. you know, I don't have a commitment. To, I mean, I could get motivated. There was a time when I really wanted to do to do a match and thought about going in and getting some training. Wait, what but match? Was, what kind of match do you think you have to do? You learn I, I three don't moves, know. but you it, go in there and it, you can be it, Chael Sonnen. Yeah. Just do a mat based attack. I mean, it can't be uh, Phil Baroni. I like Phil Baroni. He, he's an interesting character, but that's can not he work the f- a match. That's not the match to I make. Think so, yeah, I think Phil can. I haven't. I've only seen clips of him wrestle, but yeah, I thought he did pretty good. Yeah, they were short clips, though. Here's the thing, Chael. I, I, think- I think Chael versus Shelton Benjamin versus uh, Magnus versus f- or fucking Jeff Jarrett. Kurt Angle and give I that spoke guy, briefly give about Jeff Jarrett a call. doing a match. Do I call him right now? Let's give him a call. Should we put it on speaker? It's two yeah. in the morning. Well, what's he doing? Serious question. How long is this podcast? Uh, how, uh, however long, how long we want to talk. How long have we gone? Two uh, hours. 2.20. Can you post this whole thing? I, uh, my producer might be able to. <laughs> I don't know how to. <laughs> we're, we're just talking at this point. This thing ended for, for people listening an hour and a half ago. Either they turn well, it off or it shut started. off on their sure. iPhone. Because you can't download a file this big. Yeah, if anybody listened to this at work, the good news is you, you almost get to go home. Your day is almost over. <laughs> if you're working eight-hour days, it's it's time for lunch. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. Uh, Are you done drinking, John? I'm, I'm the only one drinking? No, I still actually got this one going, and I think there's two more. So. You nursing on those? What, what are you doing? I forgot I had it, to be honest. All right. No, but, Chael, back to the work in the match. I think if you were to work someone, it'd be 
pointless for you to wrestle anybody but a total superstar or fight for the world title. The Bra- it's the Brock Lesnar gimmick. Sure. There's, there'd be, it'd be pointless. A Shelton Benjamin match would be awesome for us to go watch. How about Magnus? It doesn't make sense for Chael. I, 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 I would say if Magnus held the Global Force title, it makes sense. Right. Outside of when, that... I, I, not, I, don't, I don't expect you to give out any inf- information, but like, when would the Global Force champion be determined? Not who... Yeah, that's... Um, how will that the, work? Well, okay, so as far as uh, um, the actual tournament finals taking place, that would be... I think it's... Uh, Chael, is it October 21st? Ask her if she wants to be on the podcast. Yeah. She's gone. Okay. It's October 21st, right? The next taping? Yeah. Hey, Chell, call Jeff Jarrett and it ask if it's Karen... It's 2 in the morning! Call yeah. Cyrus. If Karen wants me, uh, you know. Cyrus is up. I could get Cyrus. Cyrus, and he would come to the podcast. Well, he, yeah. Well, bring, bring him down here. We'll talk to him. Kid, but because does, he have the, does he have the key to, to access the suites, though? Because you got to put the key yeah. in the elevator. Well, yeah. we'll s- send my security guard to get him, and then uh, bring him back. Has the heat gotten that bad for you that you had to hire private security, or is that just in certain places? Uh, I, I don't have to pay for it, man. Uh, it's oh, okay, like you don't have to pay. the like guys that are badasses, just, just you know, I'm I'm with, and then you know, that's a good that's a good deal, yeah. Um, Nobody says anything. But yeah, so the Global Force Champion will be determined October 21st when the masses get to see that. But then maybe by maybe by then you can convince Chael to go after that. Now, I'll tell you this, and I don't mean to put myself over, but this is real, and you're going to see a little bit tomorrow. And I told John this, because I... So the last time we came out here, Brian, for the last show, is my first experience behind the scenes. But I got the cold shoulder from these guys. Like, I was pretty, I was pretty happy to be behind the scenes, be part of the group. Thought I would be welcomed right in. Yeah. And it didn't work that way. There was a couple of people that did... Uh, you know, the Bali Brothers, for, by example. But, uh. Now, was there a. Jab- there was a couple of jabronis that. Was they there were a kind jabroni? Of the guy on me. It's like, guys, I'm not going to start shooting on you. Chris Masters. Is this one of the people that you, uh. I, I felt like things were a little icy. I thought he could have warmed up a little more. And, and so I thought, well, maybe that's my job to let him know. You know, hey, the real shoot, you know, I'm a worker too. I'm, you know. But yeah. here's the thing, you don't have no, chill, to chill, about here, is what I was trying to chill, let him when know. There's a, when there is a, But now I'm not sure he doesn't. When, when, a, when, a, when oh, a, a hot girl is, is invited to a party, right? Right. She knows she's invited because she's the hot girl. Yeah. Until she finds out a hotter girl was invited. And now all of a sudden, I'm not the hottest girl in here and everyone's looking at her. You're the hottest girl to show up. Tell him, John. And a lot of people can't handle that. Now, I was there with you. Do I do? Did I see it? Yes. Um, but it could have. You know, is it the old school mentality of this isn't your world, so we're not going to embrace you? Maybe, but I don't think so because I think that's come and gone. But I, I, I truly think that someone came in. And they were maybe told they would be the top guy. And I'm he not speaking on Chris you. Masters or anyone specifically, just in general. And then you're there. And all of a sudden, now they know they're not the top guy. It's just that I simple. don't know the psychology behind it, yeah, but, I, I, but I, I felt it. I think yeah. some you of know, these when guys... We're, when we're in the eating hall and we're all eating, I was feeling it. I, I felt, you know, I say hello to people and trying to... Uh, it's our first time. That's what you yeah. do. You go meet people. Well, I Chill, wasn't what, really what did, getting reciprocated. What did you do? Because there's an unwritten rule in professional wrestling. When you walk into the room, you have to greet everybody. Like, even but that's if you're, not Chael, though. People come and greet true? him. Yeah. Is that true? You have to go up to them and say, Chael Sonnen, and FRB, we did nice that. FRB, let me explain how I we did it. Let me, let me explain how we did it. We I, set I up a chair. Everybody. We set up a chair. In the arena, it was an empty arena with the ring. We set up a chair, and literally, I started a line, and everyone came up and paid their respects. Right. So, the, yes, the the, <laughs> rule, the unwritten rule was followed, and everyone paid their respects but to But some chair. didn't kiss the ring. 
And that's that's the problem. Yeah. And that's the problem. So no, but they they were they were a little they were a little icy. I, you, I don't you didn't go up to them was. and say, "Hey, yes, hey I'm, ch- I'm chill, happy to be I here." I absolutely didn't. I didn't. I mean, no, I did not greet everybody in the room. But understand, when we went to eat, there was everybody in the room. Sixty people. I mean, yeah, there's I, no way to do that. I've never been in the room, but from my understanding, it, it's like unless you're really over big, unless you're like the fucking Rock or John Cena. You walk in, you greet everybody. Well, when you're the Rock and John Cena, you greet them first. It's the whole Andre sort of thing. It's well, you know more about the pro wrestling. Is there an unwritten rule when you're when you're kind of a jabroni or new to the scene? You go in, and even if you don't like the motherfucker, yeah. you you walk up to them and say, "Hey, FRB." That's always been the thing, yeah. And I even followed it as a writer. I mean, when Undertaker was there, you go up and you shake the Undertaker's hand. And I mean, to be honest, I didn't do it because it was a rule. I did it because I respected that guy. And I respected everybody back there. And and it's just, forget the rule. You walk into somebody else's world, you pay the respect. Right. But but I, I believe in that too. Yeah, well, and I don't think you did it. Yeah, because you did. You know, when those guys come person. in your world, they're marks. You know, I, yeah. I've seen them. When they come in our world, though, I mean, to follow the, I usually do go up to them because I know they're the new kid in school. I don't wait for the new kid in school to say hi. I try to make him feel welcome. Yeah, but and I'm you, not saying they should have done that with me. I'm just saying when I did take the time to you say did hi, fine. you did but, fine. But I you, felt a little, I felt a little blown off. But Jill, that's a little different because you're just a genuinely nice person. Thank you, you know, it's a little different when you're dealing with you know people Here's the with other egos. Thing too, though, Chandler, and, is you pl- you have a you have a very well-known gimmick, and and you don't come from a world where people would assume that's a gimmick. You come from a world that's real, and it is, and you are that person. You have to be to play that, but some people don't know how much of that is you selling tickets, and how much is it Chael just sitting in a hotel room, and that's the way he talks about it. But if they don't know... It's intimidating. They're the fucking mark. That's... Well, they're the fucking mark, man. I gotta tell you, FRB, if you have enough content, I have got to go to bed. I have the, the show tomorrow, we got a meeting in a number of hours, and I got Clayton two hours after that. Oh, Clayton's down here? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very but in a, in a polite way, well, I don't want to fall asleep, I don't want to give you a lack of material, but I feel I genuinely need to warn you, I'm fading fast. Yeah, we- Let's end with the feats of strength. What can you do to impress us? I could lift this right over my head. A hundred pounds, Jerry. Right that is over my head. Here, here, here's the one question I didn't ask you. Okay. Do a superstar Billy Graham. Your favorite superstar Billy Graham. Oh, the favorite? Okay. Okay. Give me give me give me, give me one second to think about this. Now I I wish we had a camera, so the fans are gonna yeah. have to imagine. But right now, Look at that arm, Brian McMahon. Touch that arm. Feel that arm. Uh, don't touch. You uh, don't touch me. You don't ever touch my body. You understand? I tra- look at you with your pale white skin. Look at me, <laughs> golden bronze, because I'm training every day in Death Valley, California. You understand? It's 114 degrees. I wake up every morning. I eat my steaks raw. I don't even cook them while I'm getting ready for you, Bruno San Martino. I lift thousands and thousands of pounds. I swim across the ocean. I run hundreds and hundreds of miles every day. <laughs> what about but my favorite part is when he tells Vince McMahon, "You don't touch. You don't ever yeah. touch my body. Look at you yeah. with your pale white skin." <laughs> and then he says, "Look at me, golden bronze." And I me- wanted to hit that on Joe Rogan and one me- time. I just yeah. didn't think. This skin thing would go over well, but, but you, that's funny. That's a funny line because I train every day in Death Valley. You California. did hit him with the middle-aged comedian. Yeah, I was going to use the <laughs> same line to say I train every day in Westland, Oregon, where it's 114 degrees. Yeah, but I did. I also like. I got to re-break it down. I also like that he said I eat my steaks raw. He then lost his place, so he repeated it. In a I don't way. even cook. Myself. I don't even cook them. Like, yeah, we we got it. We know yeah. what raw means. But I could tell he was yeah, regathering yeah, 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 yeah. his, his spot. Which what I, was the other one? Swim across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable that's, condition. That's the accent right there. I am that's the man I'm of trying. the hour. Yes. That's the accent I was trying to go for But right what's there. your favorite Bushwhackers promo? I wasn't into it, man. I yeah. was Demolition Guy. 
I was demolition guy. I didn't like that the yeah, powers of pain. The funniest thing I, I think that the road ever... warriors ripped off demolition. <laughs> yes, that's I don't the... like that anyone copied. Demolition was kind of gay though. No, come no. on, demolition was the best. The demolition best. was the best. Here's the thing, Jill. The funniest thing you've ever said ever is when you said the LOD ripped off them. And I'm ripped not saying off. this. Yes, I'm literally saying from a comedy perspective. He really said that. That was awesome. <laughs> demolition is is one of. Uh, I, I wouldn't say they're better than LOD, but that's because I know what Road Warriors did before they came, even sure. came into NWA. But Demolition was great. And Demolition even with went out, Crush was awesome. And that, I agree, but that was their biggest mistake. They went to three because they, they wanted to, to transition from Axe to Crush and keep it going. Oregon guy, so I knew his career in full support, and God, but you know, we lost him at a very young age and all that nice stuff. But he was the wrong guy. He was yeah. wrong as Crush. What was yeah. the guy? Bill Eady? Yeah, I think. Axe. He, he, was, he, yeah, he, he was, was getting old. Smash. Smash. No, yeah, Smash was, no, was, Axe was Bill Eady. Barry Darso. Yes, Barry Darso. You're Smash exactly was right. Repo Man. Yes, yeah, you, yeah. you got you got it right. Yeah. So on uh, Repo Man, maybe we should call it a night. I wish we. It's now here. I want to give the fans the time of day because they, if they're listening at work, they, it, yeah. Your Real quick, it's just over. like an after show. How do I press record if you start snoring? <laughs> just oh, so they can hear start it. Start All right. So we we, we got to tell this. We, we got to tell this story tell before. Him. See, okay. So we're in L.A. like four months ago at Metamoris, and uh, so Chell's going to wrestle Babalu. And Chill has a very bad anger problem. And so I'm, I'm in the bed. I'm not in the same bed, but I'm in a bed next right, to Right, side by side. So, so I'm snoring. And The story's better if you say you're in the same bed. God, he's uh, snoring yeah. so loud, John. Yeah, I, so I, loud. Okay. Because, yeah, but you're going to pick on your loyal friend because of a deviated septum. And I really thought that I was going to get German suplexed from the 18th floor onto fucking Manhattan Beach in California. He was so fucking mad. You heard and him from your living you room? You give your version, but you know and what? I'll, I'll tell my but version. He, but here's the thing. I just said, oh, oh, you gotta you gotta uh, wrestle Babalu and make a bunch of money. Oh, poor chill. You poor chill. Okay. That's, that's my side of the story. You were a little baby, and uh, what's your side? Okay. They're very close, but the inflection's a little different. So before we go to sleep, FRB knows he's a snore, okay? We go to third, we go to bed late. He had invited people up to the room earlier. Great people, not turned by I me. Mean, we had people in our room, so we got a late start to bed. Douglas, before he left, but you put wanted, french fries you and them. dumped a bottle of salt in our bed. <laughs> Was Marty Gennetti at the party? Right, so, so bed's not exactly Jake comfortable to start with. Now, Brian tells, the end of the story part, Brian tells me ahead of time, and we've done this dance many times. I mean, Brian we've been up traveled the chilling, We've together. been up and down the road before. Yes, but he he has told me a number of times, I'm going to snore, and when I do, wake me up, and don't feel bad about it, and wake me up over and over, but otherwise it keeps... Okay, fine. So I fall asleep, and he snores nonstop. So I'm yelling at him, Brian, 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 I'm throwing pillows out, I'm doing it, I'm, I'm waking him up. It's then like, Brian, you have to roll over. So this is where the fight starts, is he refuses to roll over, and then five seconds later, he's snoring again. And then his big move is to go, I'm just going to stay up so you can sleep. And he'll even <laughs> grab his phone like he's gonna, like he's now up. And I mean, it'll be seconds later, he's asleep with the phone in his hand. <laughs> so I'm yelling, you got to roll over, you got to roll over. So he fires back, in, in, you know, F word and this and that, and then says, uh, rolling over won't help. And I'm like, well, we have to try it. I have to wrestle in a few hours. So then he lashes out, you're wrestling Babalu, he's terrible, he's not all, this is an easy match, you don't need sleep. He's doing this whole thing. So I'm going to get up, okay, and I'm going to dump the bed. I'm going to I'm gonna tip the bed over to, to, to show him, you're rolling over, you jerk. I don't do it. He doesn't even know I'm thinking crazy like this. So the next day, he's like, I can't believe how much you lost it. You, you you had these crazy eyes. Now the room was completely black. There's no way he could see my eye, my crazy eyes. What he he calls my wife and tells her the story. He went crazy. You should have seen his eyes. It was pitch black. <laughs> he made that in his in his mind, and I was hot. That's but, awesome. 
Well, well, you have a two hundred. And then he made himself the victim of all oh, my deviated stuff. And that's true. He doesn't deviate stuff. But he ma- he never told me that until the next day. So is it open season on you if you snore? Like, let's clear this. No, up. he'll say it is. Don't wake him up. Okay. Just no, I you'll get the greatest night of sleep that you possibly could get, and we won't. No, I'm I'm going down to the casino. Fuck you guys. Wow. Yeah. Your night isn't over. Oh hell no. It's five a.m. Your body's time. Yeah. FRB, before before we let Chael go, one more story. Yeah. What's the deal with Virgil? Oh, fuck Virgil, man. Okay, here's the thing. His his manager is a good guy. His name is Paige. He's the same guy. He's his... his uh, the Sheik's oh, nephew. His nephew, yeah. He's with the Iron Sheik. He's a good guy. So it's the same guy that put over Sheik then with this gimmick. Yeah, right? yeah. And Virgil doesn't have a cell phone. and there, There's a lot of issues of getting a hold of Virgil. So it, it's not, it, it's not Virgil's manager page. It's Virgil is just a, a fucking piece of shit. And well, tell the story. So you asked Virgil to be on the pod. He accepted. Yeah, yeah. Asked him. Yeah. Uh, but you through, book it all through his manager. Through Page. Yeah. I send him the money. I. It wasn't like a, a direct like. Oh, here's fifty bucks for the for the podcast. It was more like, all right, here's fifty bucks, Virgil, because I, I've been entertained by you. You know, like saying stupid shit throughout the years. Here's 50 bucks. Can you do me a favor and come on the podcast? And they said, yeah. And and then Virgil goes missing in action, which apparently he does a lot to his own manager. So, you know, here we are a month later, and, you know, they, they said that I didn't send them any money, and then I took a screenshot of the, uh, the PayPal receipt, and we're still trying to work things out. So I, but the I, bottom line is he told you to come on a podcast, you got a show to do, and he didn't come on. That's a scumbag move. Yeah. And he no, he no call. No showing is one thing. No call, no show is just, you can't do that. You know, I brought him you back to WWE when I was there to work with DiBiase's son. No, oh, there And he, Ted, <laughs> wanted him out of there every week. He's so he worse. He's like, I got to babysit this guy. I, I, you got, you got, you, we got him. We got him. I, I was and it became drinking. a rib to keep Virgil around. I mean, I was but drinking. But he was such once. a nice guy, though. No, he is. He, yeah. he is an okay guy. I was drinking with Greg the Hammer Valentine, and Hammer. Virgil just kept coming up to him, and bothering him. Here I am, a fucking Mark. You know, just drinking with Greg the Hammer. We we're watching a baseball game. It was Tampa Bay Devil Rays versus Cleveland Indians, like two thousand seven, and. He would come up to him every five minutes and say, "Let's go to Sizzle, baby. Let's go to Sizzle." You know, you know, because he's sure. got that list. And Greg the Hammer, like the first time, he's like, "No, Virgil, I, I, I just want to watch this game. I, I don't really don't want to go to Sizzler." Comes up to him like the fifth time. Greg the Hammer's like, "Virgil, I don't want to go to fucking Sizzler. Can you leave me alone." It's like, "Okay, Daddy. Okay, okay." The, you wanted the Sizzler. Yeah, but they got they got some good stuff, man. And See, though, the like, gimmick is on him, though, because I don't even think Sizzler still exists. No, in there's, some a, parts there's, a, there's a Sizzler in Inglewood when we went to the World Cup. And we have one in Oregon. Am, I, I, am I crazy in thinking Sizzler, yes. when I was oh, growing up, was actually a nice place, and then it just kind of... Degenerate. Like Red Lobster, growing up, was like, wow, we're going to Red That's Lobster. That's a birthday. Like, for your birthday, you'd ask to go Yes, to and right now right. it's, it's it seems like no one goes to Red Lobster. Sure. Is it just bad. that people don't realize what good food is? But Red Lobster actually just got bought out, and they're a whole new company, so give them a second chance. Yeah, they did. They got bought out about a year and a half ago. Is You're that a, Landry, you love eating Landry at TGI Fridays. So, love I mean, Fridays. really, you saying yes, give them I love another chance Get the potato skins. Yeah, Chal- yeah, no work. All right, so we let's wrap it up. So let's go to the after show for a, another hour. And right, let's go to the encore show. All right, all right. So tell the people we've had it with them. We've had enough, and uh, so for Chill Sonnen and John P. Marini, hey, hey. It's FRB signing off. Later.